And so as we start to look at this, let's review the normal is 19 to 30 and optimal, we tighten that up quite a bit and go 25 to 30. So what causes hypercapnia? And that's the fancy word for too high a CO2 levels. And the causes are respiratory disorders, hypoventilation, sleep apnea, neurological disorders, and respiratory acidosis. Well, actually, respiratory acidosis is the effect. When you have those other disorders, then you have to start to worry about respiratory acidosis. And your body really likes to keep CO2 pretty tightly bound or within a good range because once you start to let that get out and you start to affect pH, then a lot more body systems come into play. Some of the signs that you can be having high CO2 levels are hot headaches, confusion, tiredness, dizziness, shortness of breath, muscle twitching. Um, if you have severe cases, you can see down there heart rate issues, disorientation, unconsciousness and coma and cardiac arrhythmias. So you can actually do a lot by controlling your breathing and also breathing through your nose. So if you can take breath through your nose and then let it out through the mouth, that starts to actually balance that. I have a lot of my patients who have issues with CO2 practice either box breathing, which is four seconds in, four second hold, four second out, four second hold, four second in. And so what that box breathing does is that helps reset the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. It brings you more parasympathetic. Another thing that I like to have patients do, and I do this when I do my cold plunge, is I practice 478 breathing. And this really gets you into a parasympathetic mode. So when you get into the cold plunge or when I get into the cold plunge, then I immediately start to breathe. And it's a four second in, it's a seven second hold, and then it's an eight second out. So it goes. And I'll do that eight times, eight to 10 times in the cold plunge tub. That gives me a little bit more than three minutes. Our water set at 38 degrees. So that's plenty of time and controlling your breath in that shock really does help. So if you have hypocapnia or low CO2 levels, one of the things that causes this is hyperventilation. So if you're freaking out <laughs> and breathing through the mouth, then you really got to start to slow down, calm down, and bring those levels back up. Once again, what causes this are fever, sepsis, altitude sickness. Um, you could be hyper excited. The effects, respiratory alkalosis, low CO2 levels. And then once again, we start to see a pattern. Things that are high also can mimic when it's low, dizziness and lightheadedness, numbness and tingling in fingers or toes around the mouth, muscle cramps and spasms, twitching, and chest pain. So when you see this stuff, as it says, reduced oxygen delivery, paradoxically low CO2 can reduce oxygen release into tissues, exacerbating symptoms like fatigue and confusion. This is a fairly simple blood test to do to see how you're doing. And then there's great books like Breathe, 
and um, I think power of breath, but they're great things to start to teach you how to breathe in a more controlled manner. And so when you're looking at this acid base balance, when it becomes out of balance, either high or low, you've really got to change or regulate that breathing. And most of the times either doing the four, four, four or the four, seven, eight, that really helps control that and make that a habit. I used to be a bad mouth breather, but now I can sit there and breathe through my nose easily, help clear up some sinus issues. Because if you're breathing through your nose and you have sinus issues, your body will start to pay attention to what's going on there. But once again, if you're having issues with CO2 or with your health in general, and you have a already have blood work done, I would be happy to sit down and talk to you about it because blood work starts to open our eyes as to what's going on in the body. And so with that being said, here's our contact information. You can always email us questions and feel free to hit us up for any type of education, uh, books that we read or recommend to our functional medicine patients. Because once again, that knowledge, actually the implementation of that knowledge is actually what brings you power. And in this case, we want that power to be your independence of health and you controlling your health. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for taking this time to look into the health of you and your loved ones. This broadcast does not constitute a doctor-patient relationship. It is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not a replacement or substitute for care. If you are having issues, please seek a qualified professional trained in functional medicine. We would be happy to be of assistance with both in-person and virtual consultations. Thank you.